Originally, the Minorcans were a group of indentured servants from Italy, Sicily, Greece, and the island of Minorca. They were brought to Florida in 1768, contracted to work on Andrew Turnbull's indigo plantation in New Smyrna for a set number of years. They would then receive a piece of land as payment for service. In 1777, after nearly a decade of poor working conditions and neglected contracts, the Minorcans fled the plantation in search of a better life nearly 70 miles north in St. Augustine. For 27-year-old Ryan Brennan, this oftentimes overlooked part of Florida history is a passion, a story he plans to tell in a unique way. On November 27th, Ryan will embark on a four-day, three-night hike through history. Traveling by foot, he will attempt to recreate the historic Minorcan Exodus, starting in downtown New Smyrna, traveling along the coastline, and into the city of St. Augustine. I met up with Ryan at the Jimenez Facio House in St. Augustine, where he works as the Gardens and Facilities Manager. Coming up next, he shares what he hopes to accomplish by retracing a Minorcan odyssey. Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Brennan. I'm the Garden and Facilities Manager here at the Jimenez Facio House, and I'm also the creator of Hiking Through History, Retracing a Menorcan Odyssey. So about a year ago, I was doing research for a uh, research paper that I was doing at Flagler College on the Menorcans. Um, while I was doing research for that, I came across Kenneth Beeson's version of the Menorcan folk story of how Francisco Pelliser snuck up from New Smyrna and came to St. Augustine. I really loved the story. I liked the idea of folk tradition being passed down. And I realized that this was a historical event that had yet to be highlighted in our, you know, our town's long history. So one day I was in the garden pulling weeds and it clicked. What if I actually hiked the same route that they hiked themselves? Slowly that snowballed into the fundraiser that we have here today. And on November 27th, I'll be beginning my hike I'm walking 70 miles from New Smyrna back to St. Augustine, Florida. It's going to take approximately four days. I'll be walking the entire way, camping out overnight at different spots. Um, if you're interested in supporting my hike, you can find more information on our website to donate and other things. Rather than use wood, we use coquina to make all of our walls. Uh, naturally mined right over there on Anastasia Island. You dig up these large brick or large chunks of fossilized beach essentially, lay them out in the sun for about five years. While that's out in the sun, the water evaporates out of it, leaving behind this shell porous like material. You then carve your bricks, then use it to build your walls. And if you know our fort, then you're familiar with coquina. It's an incredibly strong material. And yeah, it's one of the main reasons St. Augustine is still here today. So if you look behind me here, you can see our coquina walls. This is a prime example of why I'm raising money through my walk. Um, you'll see the coquina behind the lime wash here is actually pushing the lime off. That's totally natural. That's what coquina does. Because it's excavated from the ground, it's a living, breathing thing. Water comes in and water comes out. We learned the hard way in the 1970s trying to preserve this coquina. We actually added a latex paint over top of it, which closed in those pores, preventing it from breathing. What that did was had a mold build up inside the coquina, and it actually started destroying our walls. Fortunately, we realized the error of our ways and pulled all that latex paint off about 10 years later. Since then, we've been trying to recover our coquina and get it back to its original form. And the way to do that is the same way they did it back in the colonial days, which is adding coats of lime wash to it. Every seven years you add more and it'll just continually push off those layers. You add more to it and it keeps your coquina fresh and preserved underneath it so future generations can come and enjoy our house. My main goal with the donations is to preserve our coquina walls here at the boarding house. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they need lime washing every couple of years to help preserve them, and so all the money that I raise will be going directly to that. 
But really the bigger goal of this is to get people talking about the Menorcans. Um, it was a temporary event in history, these people walking. It only lasted a couple of days, so really it's not you know, a permanent event like much of the things we see here. But that doesn't mean it's not important. It was really the final leg of this transformation that this group of people was undertaking. First they come across the Atlantic Ocean with Andrew Turnbull. Then they live and work for 10 years in New Smyrna on the Indigo Plantation. Then finally they're able to become free and have to walk all the way up to St. Augustine where they're given a little plot of land just north of town by the fort. They settle in and become productive members of St. Augustine society. Of course, you still see members of Menorcan families all over town today. Even the Volano Bridge is the Eucena Bridge, which is a long historic Menorcan family here in our town. But so yeah, of course I wanna raise money for the house. That's great and everything, but there's a bigger side to all of this and that's getting attention to this story really. You know, I want people talking about it and hopefully people will follow in my footsteps going forward, experiencing this walk for themselves, you know, really putting yourself in the shoes of these people who endured this, really. It's an incredible story, so. Why have you learned about their treatment under Turnbull? Yeah, it's a, it's a different story. I think most people are used to hearing about slavery, and this is a story of indentured servitude. So they were free citizens signed away their freedom essentially to come work on this plantation in hopes of starting a new life. Now of course conditions down on the plantation were not fair or good, but it's a, it's a different story from what most people expect when they hear plantation, slavery, indentured servitude. You know, I realized that no one else had done this walk before. I searched and searched and searched and haven't been able to find anyone who's done it. And it's pretty accessible, it's 70 miles. You know, there's people who walk the Appalachian Trail and they're fine, so if they can do that. I think I can make this couple day journey and really bring some light to this unique side of our history, so. While I'm walking, I'll be creating and recording videos on different parts of history that I'm passing through. So we'll touch on things like Menorcan history, we'll touch on uh, tourism history here in Florida, we're also going to talk about some environmental impacts, things like sea turtles, uh, the way they were used historically versus the way we treat them now. We're going to talk a little bit about Coquina and the history of all of that. So follow our social media accounts. We'll be doing live videos from there and everything. You'll get all your updates through that. And yeah, I'll be posting as I'm walking. So you'll get live updates while I'm on the trail. Seeing how the historic community and even outside the historic community coming out and supporting this, you know, it's getting people involved that, you know, we never even imagined would be interested in this sort of stuff. So it's been really great seeing the community come together. It's establishing us as a place for Menorcan history here in St. Augustine. And really that's just what we're looking to keep doing here is, you know, telling history, the truth, and, you know, just keep going with historic preservation and that sort of stuff. <laughs>